In our last video we talked about Porel measures and Levesque Tilsius measures. The Levesque Tilsius measures are very important because they are defined from a function f that's increasing and very continuous. So we have a function mu that goes from the sigma algebra to the zero infinity is a Levesque Tilsius measure. So we know we can write it as for some set E in our sigma algebra. We can write the measure of E as the infimum of the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of f of p sub j minus f of a sub j, where E is covered by the union of the intervals. And in the last video, we wrote it like this, with a closed interval on the extreme B. But it can be proven that this is the same as the sum from i equals 1 to infinity. Here, instead of writing f of vj minus f of a sub j, I'm going to write just the measure of the interval aj bj. So here the sum has to go from j equals 1 to infinity. And now it's open. It's an open interval here. And obviously the set E will be covered by the union. But also of open intervals. It is the same. It can be proven. I'm going to leave this to you. And basically what this is telling us is that in general, Levesque Tilsius measures will not care about if there's a single missing point in the measure. So the difference between these two sets is that this set above is the measure of a sub j, b sub j closed, and the other one is open in here. So there's a difference of a single point. Well, Levesque Tilsius measures don't care about that. And so because we have this amazing property, and because the measure is defined as an infimum, then we will see that all these measures satisfy a property that's very, very nice. So like before, we have a measure in the sigma algebra, we take a set in that sigma algebra, and the measure of the set can be written in two ways. It can be the infimum over the measure of open sets that cover our set E, or the supremum of compact sets that are subsets of the set we're measuring. So if a function satisfies these two things, then we say that mu is regular. If it satisfies only the second one, then we say that the measure mu is inner regular. And if it satisfies this other one with the open sets, then we say that the measure mu is outer regular. Well, it turns out that Borel measures are regular, so they are both outer regular and inner regular. And this is something that doesn't happen for every measure. There are examples of measures that are inner regular and not outer regular. Examples of functions that are of measures that are outer regular but not inner regular. And examples of measures that are none of these. So basically what this is telling us is we have a set E that we want to calculate its measure. Well, what happens if for some reason we cannot calculate it? Let's say the set E is very complicated, but we know that our measure is regular. Well, if it's outer regular, then you can just approximate the measure of this set with like it says here, open sets that are suprasets of E. I'm gonna make balls because that's the typical drawing of open sets. I can just approximate this set with, for example, balls or with whatever my open sets are. And just take the infimum of all the measures of these open sets. And if it's outer regular, then we can approximate it with subsets that are compact. 
So that means that we can approximate it from the inside. So I can just grab compact sets. I'm just drawing anything in here that kind of looks like a compact set and approximate my function with this type of sets. So it actually makes sense that we can do this because I can draw it and you totally leave me, right? But that's because we're used to the real line measures. And well, the real line measures is actually what's called the Lebesgue measure. And it's when we grab everything we've done so far for the function f of x equal to x. And so then the measure of the intervals is the usual measure b minus a and so on. So obviously this measure is regular, it's a Borel measure, and so it satisfies this property. Well, now we have a more general result. Any Borel measure is regular. And the proof for this is actually not very easy. Mostly the proof of Inner regular is the most complicated one. Outer regular is it's not trivial, but it's also not so complicated. So in the next video, we will see the proof. So if you want to skip that, just skip the next video and you can go on with the rest of the reproduction list.